This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. The trial of Chad Daybell just keeps getting darker and darker. Oh, the web that they have woven. Uh, And seemingly expected everyone to be none the wiser. It's kind of shocking as you hear more and more of the testimony. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. I want to start out by taking a look at some of the testimony of Chad Daybell's neighbor and kind of some of the rather odd things that were stated to him when he asked Chad's kids. These are uh, not, uh, not Tylee and JJ, but Chad's own children from his previous marriage to Tammy Daybell about, well, what do they think about Lori and, and the fact that their mom just passed away. Let's take a listen. Did you ever have occasion to talk with Chad about how his kids felt about Lori? Yes. Uh, when we would see him, he would kind of, he would already kind of bring it up himself that they were fine with Lori, that Tammy had appeared to him in spirit, I don't know, at least twice, and said that she was doing fine and that she understood the, the plan, that she was going to move on in the spirit world and then that Chad's mission was to be married to Lori and that his children were basically becoming fine with that. So is there any, uh, hearing that, does this make a little more sense as to why Chad Daybell's children buy Chad Daybell's story? It's just so interesting, isn't it? You know, when you look at this um, person, Chad, who doesn't seem, you know, you don't look at him from the outside and think he's this impressive kind of guy, Mm -hmm. but the extent that which he can influence other people around him, neighbors, family members with this bizarre version of reality. Yeah, it really, it's, it's interesting and strange. Yeah. I mean, very interesting and strange to, to just kind of accept that. Oh yeah. Um, it's my mission now to to be with Lori. By the way, your mom just died. You know that. But now I am. I'm already married. I'm already married out here. Uh, it, it's it's just yeah. I, I, it makes me really wonder what those kids are thinking today uh, in a mm-hmm. group set. Like that we I know mean, we saw the interview a couple of like probably two years ago where they were all kind of backing Chad. I really wonder as they've all gotten a bit older. Some of them, I think, most of them are actually young adults. Um, if they're still, you know, really feeling that same way about uh, about their dad. Other suspicious activity. This is uh, Chad's insurance broker, because we know insurance was a big part of this uh, and uh, wanting to uh, to get some insurance for uh, Lori, even though she'd already been in prison. Let's take a listen to that. Yes. When he was in my office on March 11th, first of all, he looked thinner and tanner. He looked quite happy, but. His ring was black. It was different. And so my mind thought, okay, the turquoise one must have been from his marriage to Tammy. And this is his new one. Interesting. Uh, It's kind of a different demeanor to Chad so quickly. What does that say about any of this? The fact that, you know, and that's been the weird part for everybody. This wife he apparently loved and adored suddenly dies. And he's, you know, he's got his tan on, goes to the beach and no, I mean, everybody's looking at this going, well, OK, but there's not really a whole lot of evidence publicly yet to uh, to figure out what's going on. Red flag. And this man really was taking it to uh, um, an extreme degree, this idea that he's an author and he's reauthoring the story of his own life here. Fit and tan and the new blonde wife. It's, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's how anybody with any level of sophistication would think that this is going to work. Yeah. Um, but again, that says a lot about him and, and how this really rather low functioning dimwit could influence <laughs> people the way he did is the really remarkable thing. There. Oh, I love that description. Low functioning dimwit. I'm thinking I'm going to start using that in titles. So Chad, Chad, Chad <laughs> Daybell, low functioning dimwit in parentheses. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to have like water. I would have done a spit take right there. The uh, person who did the second autopsy uh, testified uh, as well. Uh, let's take a listen to that. And I have a couple of questions on the other side. What did you determine the cause of death to be? Uh, we ruled her cause of death to be asphyxia. What did you determine her manner of death to be? Uh, we determined her manner of death to be homicide. Asphyxia um, 
that means that the person was unable to get enough oxygen. Smothering um, uh, of any type, anything that blocks the uh, the mouth and nose um, could lead to asphyxia. Um, choking, anything that blocks the airway internally, uh, whether it's food or something stuffed in someone's mouth or whatever, maybe all of those things can lead to asphyxia. And when you use the term homicide, can you talk about what that means in relation to your office? It's a determination of the circumstances surrounding the death and it means to us that another person was involved in that person's death. Um, it does not imply intent, um, although it does not exclude it either. Interesting. What I'm wondering about here, I mean, they found this after they exhumed her body. Uh, they came up with this was asphyxia. Why did it take exhuming the body uh, to get there? Why, why did the coroner, why did the first examination not yield these results to begin with, despite Chad saying, oh, she's sickly. She takes all these supplements and there really isn't any evidence to show that she was sick. Yeah, that was really a gross error, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, um, unbelievable how a, a woman of her age and her level of apparent activity and fitness and, and actually, as we're learning in the trial, she was actually a very fit person. Yeah can die at home like that and there's not an autopsy done. That's mm -hmm. pretty gross negligence on the part of the coroner there. Uh, it really starts to make you wonder how many people have died these ways and they're just going with the family saying, well, you know, this we kind of saw it coming and it's like, okay, I got too much work today. We're just going to put it down this way and call it good. I mean, yeah. it's happened more than we are aware of. Yeah, probably does. It's weird, yeah. particularly when we know the rest of the story here. Yeah. But yeah, if the rest of the story hadn't have ever come out, um, would anyone ever have questioned Tammy's death? Obviously not. No, no, it would have just continued on. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.